Hey everyone, Wayne here. Today we're doing an overview and review of The Shores of Tripoli by Kevin Bertram and published by Fort Circle Games. Now before I dive into it, I do want to, first off, I want to thank um, Kevin Bertram and Fort Circle Games for providing me a copy of this game to show off to you guys. And I also would like to thank all of you guys who are watching my videos, give me a thumbs up, subscribing, and commenting. I really appreciate it. Without that, um, this channel would not be becoming as successful as it is. And I truly appreciate that, especially when you guys leave comments, you know, letting me know if you like a video, what you don't like, if you like a certain game, or if you don't like a certain game, right? Like, I want the videos on this channel to be a resource for people who are looking for solitaire war games. And I think we're, you know, we're doing well so far. We're just going to keep it up. So. Um, in this overview, I'm going to kind of cover the game. I'm not going to play through a full game or anything like that, but I'll probably play through maybe the first full turn. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, describe everything as I go, giving you guys a general idea of how the game works, how it plays, you know, win, lose conditions, etc. Um, and then I'll give you my kind of final thoughts in my review at the end. So let's dive into the overview. All right, so this game, The Shores of Tripoli, covers the first Barbary War. Um, if you can see the map here, I have, it is a, it's a longer sort of skinnier map, so a little bit interesting map design here. But you can see the very left, 1801, covers between 1801 in the spring to eight, up to 1806. Um, the game can very easily end sooner than that. It does not necessarily play through um, every, every year. Uh, in this game, now I'm talking about the solitaire version of it. It does have a two player version, right? Where it's one side plays the United States, one side plays the uh, Tripolitan forces, um, specifically uh, Yusuf Karmanli with Tripoli, and then you can see Tripolitania down here, and then he has different possible allies, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, uh, etc. So in the game as is, um, you play, when you play in solitaire, you play as the United States. The bot covers the Tripolitan, or and it's called the T-Bot in the manual so we might say that for short just to make it a little easier so t-bot manages those forces um it is a card driven game and what you're going to do is each turn you're going to have certain cards you're going to have some of these core cards and if you look at the bottom of the screen here you can see some here for the united states and you can see a bunch of cards laid out here for the t-bot um so for when you're playing the cards they're going to control it's card driven game like i said so you can either play them as an event or you can play them for a certain action um, actions are going to be things like, say, moving some of your frigates um, or building a gunboat. Or you can play it for the event if the event is applicable to what's going on. Sometimes you can't play an event. Sometimes you know, you're going to have your cards and maybe you played a couple events and it's going to be like, okay, you just have to do something else. But generally speaking, there's always be something you can do with your cards. Um, and a big part of the game will be that strategizing when you play cards, how you play them, do you you know use them for their event or do you use them for the kind of the generic action? Um, that'll be a big part of the game. And it's a big part of a lot of card-driven war games. So as the U.S. player, um, your goal is to either get to the point where you can play the treaty card here or you able, you're able to uh, your land your Marines and your forces. They start in Alexandria. You go to Dern. Benghazi, and then make your way to Tripoli and capture Tripoli. Either of those scenarios, you're going to win the game as the United States. Um, for the, in this case, again, the T-Bot, right? I'm not talking about the uh, Tripolitan player as a another player, just looking at that as a solitaire game. Um, they're going to win if they get all of your gold coins. U.S. player starts off with 12 gold coins. Um, as they conduct raids, as the T-Bot conducts raids, they're going to go ahead and capture coins. There's also certain cards that will... Um, their events will get them the coins. If they get all 12, basically, it's like a U.S. sues for peace type of thing, gives up, and they win. At the same time, if they sink four of your frigates, which I'll show you quick, you have frigates and gunboats. Now, the U.S. is the blue here, so you have your frigates are the big three-mast ones, the gunboats are the little one-masters, and then um, for the... T-Bot, same deal. There's, they call them, instead of calling them gunboats, they call them Corsairs. So the little one mass ones, and they potentially have a couple frigates that could enter play. Just depends on what happens with the cards. Um, if they're able to sink four of your frigates, 
then they lose as well. Basically saying, hey, you know, we've suffered too many losses. Uh, United States, again, sues for peace and says, we'll pay whatever tribute you need to not fight this war anymore. So uh, your goal when you're playing as the United States, I mean, you're trying your best to prevent their raids because what they'll do is besides a couple card draws, you see all their little uh, Corsairs triple, down in Tripoli. You can see a couple up here in Gibraltar, Gibraltar. Excuse me. This is the beginning setup, by the way. They're going to move out into the area out here, which I'll cover in a second, and they're going to conduct raids. And you're going to roll dice, and they may get gold coins. They may not. It just depends on how they roll. When that happens, though, uh, if you notice, they're coming out of their harbor, right? So each of these is a harbor. These are smaller circles. And then you can see a lighter area out here. This is a patrol zone. You, as a United States player, as you're playing cards and you know do, taking actions, you're able to place your frigates out here in these patrol zones. And your frigates now, whenever they, whenever the T-Bot T tries to launch a raid, a pirate raid, your frigates are gonna be able to uh, conduct an interdiction. And so you're gonna roll dice, and you're gonna see if you can basically stop some of them. You're, you're pretty much never gonna be able to stop all of them. They may be able to stop some of them, just reduce the amount of gold that they're gonna get. Um, the game is definitely has a lot of dice involved. You can see right up here at the top, all the different colored dice. There's a lot of dice rolling but I think it works pretty well. And there's also a lot of cards that you can use to influence actions with dice, maybe rolling more dice or, you know, et cetera, which allows you to kind of influence the combat and influence the interdictions, et cetera, et cetera, and in, uh, influence raids. So as you're playing, you're gonna just do whatever you wanna do as the United States player. The T-Bot though, they're gonna have certain guidelines and rules. So for instance, here in the very back of the rule book, there's a solitaire card play requirement. And it's gonna tell you based on the T-Bot event card, and you have all the different ones listed here, and the T-Bot battle card, kind of when they're playing. So as you start playing, it's gonna be a little tougher because you're gonna read the cards and you're gonna say, okay, what do I do? But you never wanna forget, you wanna check the back of the rule book here um, to tell you exactly, because some of them, the wording on the card is not necessarily gonna apply or you wouldn't use it when you would think if you're playing solitaire, if you're playing with the T-Bot. So, um, like I said, with the card-driven game, you're gonna have a couple of cards that are always out here. For the US, you have the three, and then when it comes to the T-Bot here, they have a line of cards. So they have the line of their event cards, they have these two cards that always stay out here, and then they have battle cards down here. I know you guys can't really see it, but right below this line, there's a line of six battle cards. And based on what it says here, and based on the way the bot works, you're generally starting with the left, you're working your way across, seeing if you can take each action. Um, if you're able to take that action, you're gonna go ahead and do that. Not only based on what the card says, but again, based on what it says in the back of the rule book. Um, if you're unable to, you have a couple of things over here that stay, and, oh, and by the way, when you play something, one of these cards, they get discarded. However, these two over here don't get discarded. And then they also have a draw deck that they will draw from when they're unable to do these actions. Um, same thing with, obviously, United States, we have a draw deck. That we're going to get to draw through different amounts of cards, um, depending on the turn, kind of how it, well, it's always the same amount of cards. You always draw six, but you're going to be discarding down to eight, and then the different years have some different rules um, attached to them. But it's all stuff in the rule book, and we're not going to cover every single little rule. So I think that's a pretty good overview. United States, you're trying to get to Tripoli or... Well, that's kind of what you're trying to do. Um, trying to sue for peace, right? Get them to sue for peace, I should say. Um, and then as the T-Bot, the T-Bot's trying to get your gold, keep raiding, keep taking your gold, make make the war too costly for you, um, and either by sinking your frigates or capturing your gold. So let's dive into the actual, um, more of the full turn playthrough. All right, so let's play through at least one full turn here. Um, if you want, if you feel like the overview that I already did is enough, go ahead and jump to my review uh, towards the end. You'll see it labeled in the top left of the video. Otherwise, go ahead, let's uh, at least play through a turn and kind of see how things are. Let me kind of reset it here as I was showing everything off. All right, so again, this is the solitaire setup. Um, you're seeing the United States with three frigates in Gibraltar. The T-Bot has two, I feel like saying Tripolitan, because I feel like saying T-Bot is kind of just doesn't have a good history feeling, right? Say T-Bot, but it is what it is. So anyway, the T-Bot here has a couple Corsairs in Gibraltar. You can't fight in that harbor. Gibraltar is a, considered like a neutral harbor. Um, 
They have a bunch of Corsairs in Tripoli. And then the little cubes, I don't think I covered this, kind of forgot, is the uh, ground forces. So kind of when you are you have your armies that start in Alexandria and, and march Dern, Benghazi, Tripoli, they're going to conduct a ground combat. Fairly simple. Um, I don't know if I'm going to show it because when I cover the naval combat and such, you're going to get a pretty good idea of how it works. So, all right. If we get all set up, let's go ahead and dive in. Now it is 1801, the spring of... The United States player always goes first. You have, um, again, you have those three core cards like I talked about, which those are core cards that sit outside, sit out here. Um, you can see them. And you can play them whenever you want or we know whenever you would normally play a card. Other than that, each turn, three, four, five, six, you're going to draw six cards at the beginning of a turn. Go ahead and look through them. And again, they're going to have the different actions on there. Or you can discard a card without playing the event. Or, but then you can, um, you know, use a general general action of movement um, or building a gunboat for the United States. That's what they can do. So, in this case, um, you look at your cards, and you know we're going to go through every single card. But I just want to give a general idea how the game will play here. So they're going to have different things you can say. Some of them may not apply that turn. Right now, I seem to have a couple of them that have to do with the army. Quite a few of them actually that have to do with the army, which in my case isn't really going to help me a whole lot because, well. I don't have an army in Alexandria yet, and I'm definitely not ready to march my army to Tripoli here. So uh, we're definitely not sending the Marines to the shores of Tripoli yet. What we will do, let's go ahead and, um, okay, I know what we'll do. So for our first action, um, let's go ahead and play from our core cards, Swedish frigates arrive. Place two Swedish frigates in the naval patrol zone of Tripoli. We discard that card, and these are the two yellow ones here. We can go ahead and place them out in this patrol zone here. Now remember, from my overview, these will prevent, or at least help prevent, against raiding conducted by um, the T-Bot player. So, that was our action. Now it goes over to the T-Bot, and we go ahead and we look at our line of cards here. And based on, again, what the card says and the book, you see what happens. So in this case... Um, what you would do is you look at the first card, and I, I know the fact that this will apply now. Now, you would always want to check it though, especially if you're not used to the game. So, Murad Rice breaks out, or Reese, Murad Reese breaks out. Move the two Tripolitan Corsairs from the harbor of Gibraltar, so the two red ones over there, um, to the harbor of Tripoli. Any American frigates in the naval patrol zone of Gibraltar may first make an interception roll. So if I had moved any American frigates to the, to the patrol zone here, they could have tried to intercept them. I didn't, and I knew this would happen. Um, so they're gonna actually move over. Now, just a quick thing, I just wanna point this out, is that if you do look at the card, so it seems like, well, that's that's what you just play it no matter what, right? Well, no, because if you look at the T-Bot event, Marad Reese breaks out. Play if there are no frigates in the naval patrol zone of Gibraltar, or if it is winter of 1801. So if I had put, as the American player, if I had put at least one frigate here, then during spring, summer, fall, the T-Bot would actually skip this card and go on to other cards and take different actions. But I didn't put any frigates there, so it is going to play this card. Just kind of a, a reminder, a little heads up that you can't just look at the cards. You do have to look at that rule book, the back of the rule book, to see whether they're still going to play a card, even if it seems like, oh yeah, that makes total sense that they would play it. You still, assuming you want to follow what the T-Bot would do, check the back of the rule book. So, simple. We discard that card. Go ahead and move both of them from Gibraltar to Tripoli. And that'll be it for them. So now that the U.S. went and the T-Bot went, we go ahead and move our marker from spring to summer. It's now summer of 1801. We have our same hand of cards. We don't get to draw any new cards or anything like that. You only draw at the end, at the beginning of a new year. So we have our regular cards. Um, let's go ahead. Yeah, we have a lot of land ones. Unfortunately, we got kind of cursed with a whole bunch of land cards. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to discard this tribute paid card and use it. Instead of using it for an event, we're going to discard it and use it for the action, which actually we're going to do is movement. Um, we're going to move two of our, um, Two of our frigates from Gibraltar here and move them to the naval patrol zone. Now there's no like movement factors, anything like that. Um, wherever they are, you can move them to any other spot on the board. Now, when they get to where they are, depending on what's going on, they may or may not have an action they have to conduct. So 
if we had, say we had sent one of these into Dern in the actual harbor, it would have to conduct a naval bombardment on the infantry there. And then when it was done, it would retreat to Malta. That's for the U.S. forces. In this case, a naval patrol zone here. We're just trying to kind of blockade Tripoli, trying to keep their uh, their raiders from coming out and doing damage to us and stealing our gold. So um, that's it for the U.S. player for this, uh, this action. So now it goes to the T-Bot. Um, you start checking the cards in a row here. And I'll tell you right now, none of these are going to apply. So first one, Constantinople sends aid. Play if Hammett's army has captured Dern. Clearly, we haven't even uh, created our army, so definitely that hasn't happened. Um, Yusuf Karmanli, pirate raid with the Corsairs from the harbor of Tripoli and the Corsairs from the harbor of each ally, which is the three orange. There are no allies active, so we skip it. Sweden pays tribute, payable, playable, excuse me, if it is 1803 or later. Well, it's 1801, so again, we skip that one. And we end up here on the five Corsair check. If there are five or more Corsairs in the harbor of Tripoli, Tripoli performs a pirate raid. You don't have to discard this card. So this one is not one you would play. This is just one that you would actually just, just keep there and it's always available to you. So there are three, four, five, six, seven. I'd say that's more than five. So we're gonna go ahead and conduct our pirate raid. So they head out into the harbor, or excuse me, they head out into the naval patrol zone. Now our frigates here are gonna go ahead and try to conduct an interdiction. Um, what you're doing here is, Okay, so what we're going to do is go ahead, and I'm going to see. I don't think I had any cards I could use to help me with the interdiction, because there is at least one card. No, I don't, afford They have a bunch of land cards. It's a bad draw, and that's what happens sometimes in these games. So what we do for interdiction, super simple. For every frigate, we get to uh, roll two dice. So we have two U.S. frigates and two Swedish frigates. So four of each. And take our dice. Go ahead and give ourselves a nice roll in the dice tower here. All right, we go ahead and... If you can see it, I think you guys can see all the dice in there. Um, it should be, there are, what we're looking for are sixes. So for us, we only have the two sixes here. So that means two of the Corsairs are sunk and returned to the Tripolitan Supply box up here. Not too bad, which means that instead of them raiding with seven, they only get to raid with five. Now, before we conduct the actual raid, we actually roll for it. First of all, let's get these dice out of here. So we don't get too many dice over here. Uh, second, what we're gonna do is we're going to check the cards we have. And again, um, now that I've, since I've played multiple times, like many games, I understand right away that there is a card. The first couple times you play, you're gonna have to kind of double check as you're playing. You know, it's gonna make the first couple turns against the bot a little slower. So you don't wanna make sure that you're um, playing the cards you are supposed to be playing. In this case, um, it says here, T-Bot Battle Cards. Happy Hunting, which was the first one on our list, on our row down here. I know you guys can't see it, but I wanted to have the main board on the on the screen for you. Um, playable when making a pirate raid with tripods and corsairs. Roll three di additional dice. Happy Hunting. And it says here, Happy Hunting, play on the first tripolitan pirate raid. Well, this is the first uh, raid that they're conducting. So we're going to go ahead, discard this card to get three additional dice. Now what they do get to start with for base is one die for each of their um, corsairs. Three, four, five. Three additional, eight, which that is all their dice that they have right here. You can always re you know, roll extras if you need to. You're not limited by the supply of dice. So they get to roll eight dice. Now what they're looking for are fives and sixes. Um, for every five or six that they get, they're gonna steal or raid, pirate, whatever you wanna call it, one gold piece. Go ahead and roll. So looking at it, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> okay, so that was brutal for me. So that was really good for them. Um, in addition, if you what you do is, so they got five, um, five of these gold pieces. Remember, we the U.S. player starts with twelve, and if the Tripolitan player gets all gets twelve, all twelve, and our treasury is reduced to zero, they're gonna win automatically. They just got five, so that was really good rolling on their part. Really bad rolling for me. Now again. When you're looking through the cards, there's going to be cards you're going to play as a result of certain actions or certain events happening. For instance, when, you have their, um, when the Tripolitan player has their first successful pirate raid, plays one Tripolitan Corsair in the harbor of Tripoli, merchant ship converted. So basically, it's like saying that they captured one of the merchant ships they raided. So they get an additional one. Let me go ahead and put the other five that were there and put them back. Um, put them back in Tripoli here. 
All right, so that was it for them after they just raided our treasury and took five gold. So now it goes back to the US player. Go ahead and move the marker along to fall. Now, let's see, what do I wanna do here? Um, let's go ahead and um, let's play early deployment. Take one American frigate from the following year of the turn track and place it at any naval patrol zone. So from 1802, we had one that was gonna come in as reinforcements. I'm gonna go ahead and place it over here in the Tripoli Naval Patrol Zone. Now it goes back over to the T-Bot player. They're gonna check Constantinople sends aid. Doesn't apply, remember no army. Um, use of Carmanli, pirate raid with Corsairs for if they have allies, there are none. Sweden pays tribute, it's not 1803. So we go over to the five Corsair check. If there are five or more Corsairs in the harbor of Tripoli, they perform a pirate raid. Three, four, five, six. So they're definitely gonna do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and move them out here. Again, now we're gonna go ahead and conduct an interdiction. Now we have an additional frigate. So instead of just four dice, we'll get to roll six, and then four for the Swedish. Let's get the uh, this out of here. A handful of dice here. Come on, we need sixes. We got two sixes. So we have to go ahead and sink two of their corsairs. Send them back to the supply. So now they only get to raid with four. All right, so they're gonna go ahead and roll for their four, one for each. Remember, five or six, they get a gold. Um, a five and a six, so two gold. So they're at seven gold right now, right? Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's, they are kicking butt. This is not good. This is not a good first turn for the United States player, I'll tell you that right now. Um, Okay, so go ahead and send them back here. Um, now, what we're going to do, we'll go ahead and let's see. Oh, and then we go ahead and move the marker on to winter. So now it's the final uh, turn. So, you know, there's four turns during each year. Winter, 1801. So final turn for the year. What I'm going to do, um, just because I'm, mm, I know that it's kind of want to show you guys a couple different things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and play the Thomas Jefferson card for my core card. We have eight American frigates. Resolve any battles that result. So we'll grab that frigate that's chilling over in Gibraltar. Go ahead and move him over to Dern. I'm going to go ahead and move one of the frigates from uh, Tripoli Naval Patrol Zone. Put that in Dern as well. And then I'm going to send these two American ones into the harbor of Tripoli. Now, I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this action regularly, but I just want to show it off to you guys so you guys can see a couple of different aspects of it. So, now let's go ahead and resolve everything. Um, what we're going to resolve is we have a naval bombardment in Dern because we have our frigates. There's no opposing naval units, and then there's just opposing infantry. And then we're going to have a, a, sh a little naval battle here in Tripoli. So, let's do the naval bombardment. Very simple. We have our two frigates. They're going to roll two dice each. And what they're doing is they're going to go ahead, if we had any gunboats, they would come from Malta. Um, so they wouldn't actually have to move them. They would just automatically come from Malta. Um, they would roll one die. So two per. And then for every six, we eliminate the Tripolitan Infantry. Roll two sixes. So two of these infantry are eliminated. And at the end of it, both frigates um, retreat from Dern and go to Malta. And then from next, you know, next turn or next action, we'd be able to move them where we wanted. Um, two of them are in Tripoli. Let's go ahead and have a naval battle. And again, this is, you're going to see why I wouldn't necessarily recommend this normally. Uh, so just like normal, um, it would be um, a couple things. One, we're going to roll just, we roll, you know, two dice for each of our frigates, and then each of their Corsairs rolls a die as well. So we can go ahead and do that. Let's just get that out of the way first. So have all the dice at once. Roll. All right, um, looks like only one six, so they got one hit on us. Um, what we would do, and just to make sure, there is a card called the Guns of Tripoli. However, play during a naval battle in the harbor of Tripoli. The Tripoli fleet may roll an additional 12 dice. However, again, always want to make sure you're checking the bot on the back here, the actual rules. The Guns of Tripoli play in any attack on Tripoli in 1805 or 1806, except for winter of 1805, or if the assault on Tripoli is being played. Well, it's 1801, and I'm just showing you guys how the game works, so they're not gonna play guns at Tripoli. All right, um, so we had our rolls up here. We had no hits on them. They had one hit on us. 
So we go ahead and apply a hit. Now, thankfully for us, it takes two hits to sink a frigate. So with the frigate just becomes damaged. We go ahead and remove them one space ahead on the turn track. So we'll actually get them next turn. So it won't take that long. It's already winter of 1801. So we're gonna get them back right away. Um, but you do for naval combat and naval bombardment, you just do like one round of combat. And we go ahead and we retreat our last frigate back to Malta. All right, now that is it for us. So now it goes to the T-Bot. Again, none of these apply. None of them apply, so it goes to five Corsair check. Aha, there's only four Corsairs here, not five. So now we go to the draw pile. So now we go ahead and draw a card, and depending on what the card says, you're gonna have something happen. So for instance, storms. Select a naval patrol zone that contains at least one American frigate. Roll one die for each American frigate. The first six rolled sinks a frigate. Each additional six rolled damages a frigate and is placed in the following year, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now there's no American frigates here. It's just the Swedish frigates. So what it should be, let's go ahead and check the uh, storms and psychic storms. There's a naval patrol zone with at least two American frigates. Play immediately. Otherwise, add to the end of the event card line and draw another card. So we have our little events down here, right? Our event card line. And go ahead and add it on the end and now we draw another card and now morocco declares war place three moroccan corsairs in the harbor of tangier so we have our allied corsairs they show up over here and now when they're conducting raids they may be raiding from tangier as well so that may be that's another threat that we're going to have to deal with um that is the end of the t-bot turn so you go ahead and you move the marker over to spring, move this one over to 1802, you go ahead and grab any reinforcements. Um, if it's US frigates, they show up in Gibraltar. If it's anything for the Tripolitan player, they show up in Tripoli. Um, us as the American player, we have our hand of cards. We just draw an additional six. And then we go ahead and we look through them, pick which ones we like, don't like, and discard down to eight. So then at this point we'd have, likely have, eight cards in our hand um you continue that way you know multiple you know four actions or four turns per year you continue through until like i said i mean you run out of gold which in which case already after the first year um the t-bot has captured seven of our 12 gold so things are not looking good for the u.s player in this particular game um continues on like that until one player is determined to be the winner all right, time for my review of The Shores of Tripoli. So I have to say, I really enjoy this game. I'm glad I've been able to play it. Um, I don't know if this is one that would have jumped out to me that I would have said, hey, I wanna get this one, but I'm glad I got the opportunity to, to check it out, play it, show it off to you guys, because I really enjoy this game. Um, let me start off kind of describing things I don't like as much, and then we'll go into what I do like, which is most of it. So um, things I don't like, um, there's definitely a lot of dice rolling and some randomness that there's a small level of dice, you know, luck mitigation, but it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of it, right? So you're going to have games where, for instance, in my little one turn preview you guys just saw, I mean, the T-Bot just got seven gold in the first turn. I only have five left or in the first, first year, excuse me, the first year. Um, I only have five left. Well, I'm telling you right now, they now have allies on the board. There's, they don't they don't have a ton here, but they do outnumber the um, for the frigates here in the patrol zone, so they're likely to keep raiding. As they keep raiding, they're going to get more money, and uh, yeah, I'm probably going to lose based on that. I mean, I can pretty much tell you that right now. So my game has now been decided by the first year where the fact that I had a couple bad rolls, bad for me, good for them, right, where they just raided and had a tremendously successful job raiding. So does that happen every game? Well, no, of course not. That's the nature of dice, right? Like it's random. So some games that may happen, a lot of games it won't happen, but it would maybe feel better if there was a maybe a little more ways to mitigate luck. Um, I understand that when you're playing solitaire against the bot, things are a little different. Um, they make you know the bot a lot harder maybe than it would another player would be, right? Instead of 50-50, it's more like the bot's gonna win the majority of games, which has been my experience. Um, but maybe a, nice, a little better way to mitigate some of the luck would be nice. Um, I think that's kind of it for what I don't like. I mean, I'm just I'm just being honest. So let's dive into what I like, which is pretty much everything else. So starting off with the components, components are fantastic. Board, nice thick mounted board, looks great, works well. Everything's the size of everything's perfect, right? You can fit everything in the different areas. When I first set it up, I thought, well, these are kind of these big circles. Like this is kind of weird, but kind of a weird look. 
But once it's set up, and I think it already looks great right now, once it's set up and you have the ships out here, right, you have these cool wooden frigates, um, three masts, you know, you have these Corsairs everywhere, it starts looking great. Yeah, okay, so the armies are represented by colored cubes. That's the most boring part, right? You have these great frigate designs, these three masts, looks really cool, Corsairs look cool, and then you have, you know, infantry, you know, look. You can tell the Marines from the Tripolitan infantry because the Marines are blue. Like, okay, well, not as cool there, right? But still, overall, component quality is fantastic. Really like it. Um, all the different dice. I do love rolling dice. I know I mentioned during my, you know, don't love the fact that there's not, maybe not as much luck mitigation as there could be. That you could have a couple bad rolls and suddenly it's like, ah, it's game over. Might as well just reset. Um, however, I do like rolling dice. So I don't mind the, that the dice are in here. And what I do like with the dice is the fact that they have all the different colored dice you know, blue, the red, the yellow. Um, now, I'm not sure why. I don't know why there's eight yellow when there's only ever two Swedish and they can only roll two each. So there really only should be four. Maybe those four extra dice could have been two to more to blue, two more to red. Just because you'll find yourself sometimes having to roll extra of blue and red. Or as I've never found myself having to roll more than four for the yellow. So the, the, maybe the dice could have been a little different mix, right? That's not really a complaint. It's sort of a usage thing. Um, but I love, I love the fact there are different colored dice that come with the game. Now the cards, and this is part of the control, uh, quality cards are fantastic. Linen finish, beautiful. And we saw my unboxing too, you guys. So, you know, kind of up close a little bit. There's beautiful looking cards, the artwork using, you know, the, um, old paintings on there. Just beautiful. Everything flows very well. It can read it super easy. They're easy to understand. Um, the gameplay itself, right? It's card driven. And it always feels like you have a reasonably good choice. I mean, even at the worst time when you're like, man, I don't I, I don't know if there's anything I can do. You can always maybe build another gunboat, right? Or you can kind of move your frigates around a little bit. You always feel like you can do something. In addition to that, when it comes to the AI player, right? The, the T-Bot here, the way it works with these cards, when you first set it up and you first see the book and you see this, it's like, ah, I don't know if this is going to work. It seems a little weird, but it actually works really well. Play a game, play a game, two games. You got it down. And then it's no longer, well, wait, I should have played this. Instead, you remember, yep, I always will play this after the first pirate raid. Also, always play this card once I have, et cetera, et cetera. You get used to kind of the idiosyncrasy of the bot. But at the same time, because there is a draw deck, there's always going to be an a element of randomness that you're not going to always know. So even though you may feel start feeling comfortable, like I have a pretty good idea what the bot's going to do based on the kind of event row, which, by the way, you can set up differently. It just... The game recommends a certain way the rules do um you may say oh, i know what this is going to happen but first of all just because you know it doesn't mean you can do anything about it right and secondly when it starts drawing cards so it starts say using up some of these events and it's doing more to card draws you don't know what's going to happen right it could be anything it could be u.s supplies run low move one american frigate from any naval patrol zone to the harbor of malta so suddenly you're maybe you're you know frigate one of your frigates at tripoli is up in malta now or the allies enter, right? And so suddenly they have their allies at Tangier, Algiers, Tunis, etc. Um, the way the cards work with the randomness, but it doesn't feel random for random sake. It feels like, because you know there's different events that are going to happen or a really good chance of happening, but you don't know what order they're going to happen in. So you're seeing history, right? You're seeing the elements of the first Barbary War, but in your own unique experience. Um, and that's when it ties in and why I really like the game as well. So it has a tremendous amount of history in it. This was one that I mentioned. I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning of this video, but I mentioned it in my unboxing as I didn't know really a whole lot of the first Barbary War. Um, and I still want to learn even more. But by reading the this historical supplement designer notes that came in um, with the game, and then just playing the game and reading the cards, you start getting a much better idea of kind of what happened during that um, that war, that conflict, whatever you want to call it, um, this is sort of interplay between a you know growing United States that wasn't a superpower yet, but was definitely powerful. But has limitations on what they could do, and you never feel like you have enough, right? You never feel like you have enough frigates, even if you had all the frigates out here. It really never feels like you have enough to totally interdict Tripoli, to conduct naval bombardments. You know, you're got and you got to get your army out there as well in Alexandria and start marching them. And you're going to start looking at, almost looking at like a clock, right? As you're getting the seasons are passing and the years go by, you're going to realize, uh oh, I have to get my army moving. I have to get them on the board and I have to get them moving. And that tension is a really great part of the game. 
brings out the history and makes it a fun game, period. Um, also feel like the, the way the game is, it's simple enough that you can teach pretty much anybody how to be a war gamer to play it, but um, you, as a war gamer, you're gonna love the history, love everything else. Um, it's a fun experience. You know, you're seeing cubes and stuff and wooden pieces. It may not look like a war game, most traditional war games, but it's definitely a fun one and it's a great one for a solitaire gamer. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed um, checking out this game. Let me know below what you think of the game, what you think of this video. Leave a comment. And if you're one of the 60% of my viewers who have not subscribed, please subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Um, just allows me to, you know, get more of these games, to show off to you guys and help you decide, hey, is this a game that I want to pick up or not? So until next time, guys, later.